Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Welcome to Takatapui Talk. I'm Donald Hollingsworth and you're listening to Takatapui Talk. Here's Nanu. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kwa whakarongo mai nei ki tēnei kōpai i kurangi tuarua o Takatapui Talk. I'm Nanu and it's so great to be back on another beautiful Sunday afternoon. How have we been? How have we been? How have we been busy as hell? This is our second episode, Nanu. Episode number two. Thank you all for listening. Yes, yes. Thank you all for listening. Oh my God. And thank you for the beautiful feedback. Yeah, incredible feedback. Um, so I think we're on the right track. Uh, we must be doing something. <laughs> we haven't pissed anyone off yet. We haven't pissed anyone off. Um, but, you know, give us time. You probably do. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Like, you know, maybe episode two and a half. What sort of feedback have you gotten? Um, like... Um, beautiful put it all love that we touch on different subjects without going too deep into them um, but you know gave beautiful opinions on things and, our, and once again Fano, um, if he, we, these are our, our, our own fakaro these are our own opinions they're not we're not preaching the gospel to anyone no um, so we just we're just sharing our, our thoughts and different things mm-hmm. um, I, one of my friends uh, said that um, he basically started listening and then he was doing like the 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 household chores and, and housework <laughs> because it felt like he was sitting here in the salon with us. So that is so good. He was very relaxed and um, another one was having really great uh, points of view. Yeah, and and you know, just sort of getting stories out there that probably haven't been told mm. and need to be told. Because you know, let's remind our audience that's where we are. We're in my salon in Rotorua, my MAI. Uh, yeah. And it's very exciting to um, even be able to be able to, to do something that we've worked so hard on to developing, and uh, it's, it's so exciting. We had seventy five downloads for our last dip. I, I was I, <clears throat> I I was gobsmacked. So <laughs> and, and a little bit scared. Yeah. I don't I don't actually know what that means because this is all new to me. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm used to sort of hosting and in, in public spaces for yes. different things. Um. <laughs> so this whole thing is just a whole new ball game. Yes. <laughs> I know. I was like I was, I stood there. I felt like Sally Field when she won that Oscar. You do like me. You do like me. <laughs> you really or not. Well, you're downloading it because you don't like us. But either way, thank you for downloading. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you don't like it, tell us why. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it worse for you. So. Yeah, we want that. We definitely yeah. want that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, there's going to be good comments. There's going to be bad comments. And mm. that's just the, the nature of this, this mucky, yeah. isn't it? This it nature is. of this, this work. And let's thank our incredible sponsors. What's up? What's up, Curious? Thank you. Mel and Trev. Namahi, Namahi. Giving us this incredible... Love you. Um, Love you both. Uh, Even though I don't say it, because you know me, I'm not touchy feeling like <laughs> because you're on the podcast, I'm going to say it. Yeah, and uh, it was exciting. Uh, I was so grateful for Mel and... Well, uh, uh, what, Warren? No, no. What What's up, Couriers? What's up, Couriers? Have another drink here, Jim. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I have had a gin. <laughs> and uh, I've been so, we're so appreciative because, you know, we really couldn't afford to buy the, all the equipment oh, for this I mean, sort of no thing. No, I mean, a hand jobs could have equated to this no. kind of <laughs> Honestly. I mean, well, probably like a million, but, you know, that's, that's, I've only got two yeah. hands. I don't think you'd give a hand job to your brother in law, though, would you? Well, no, I mean, but, you know, like for, like, for money, mm. not my brother in law, obviously. No, I know. But, you know, putting us out there. <laughs> Sorry, Trev, I'm not making a joke that's, of you. That's a bit icky. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we love you too, and I and we are so grateful, and we will always thank you for this uh, opportunity. And also big Mickey and Kiki to Tia, Tia yeah. Smith, who's also helped us out, and also to Bobby, Mickey Howard. Oh, Bobby Howard, she came Hello, in today. <laughs> and so Bobby Howard is a local, oh, wow, she's like a diva. She's a jazz singer. She's a vocal master. She's a vocal master, she yeah. Yeah. Unafraid and unapology, just like us. And she uh, is the chairman of our Rotorua Musical Theatre. President, yes, she's the president, president of the Rotorua Musical Theatre Society. Um, and the thing about Bobby is when I met her, and I met her through you, um, she gave me the opportunity to work with our Rotorua Musical Theatre. I've done four musicals four, for yeah, them now, and I'm really grateful for it. I'm really grateful to have you. And we learn, uh, we, and so how it crosses over when you do, um, when you do voluntary work, even in hair and makeup, when you do voluntary work for our local theatre companies, they then support you in this way by bringing you more business. Yes. And there is people that I, that I, you know, worked on in hair and makeup in those shows, Keep the Home Fires Burning specifically, mm-hmm. and those people still come to me. Isn't that great? Yeah. 
They and do. then all the people that come to me come to you because of me. Come Correct. Of you. Well, you're my come muse. Come to you because so. of me. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't realise just how many people I was in terms of. So you said, I'm like, holy crap. Yes. Shit, I didn't realise there was that many people. Because my salon is a you. hairdressing salon. <laughs> And we're a whānau. Yeah. We're a whānau here at my salon. Yes. And I think we touched on that last time, actually. So uh, how how lovely it is when clients come as groups, mothers, sisters, and they come from all over Uncles, the place. Uncles, aunties, you know, my sister and her husband come in yeah. together and they love it. They had the best time. You make mm. them feel so welcome. So thank you for and that. Oh, of course, my thank love. Thank you for looking after them like you look after me. Mm. They don't drink, unfortunately, but I do. No, they don't. But they love – oh, she doesn't even have a cup of tea. Anyway, um, what's been happening? What's been happening? So we've just finished Pride Week. Oh, we yes. Pride Week here in um, How beautiful was that? A long time Sorry. coming, yeah. a very, very long time coming. Uh, it opened up with, well, we had Drag Bingo with the beautiful Siobhan Borealis. Yes. Who um, you may not recall. Did she come through from Auckland? Yes, from Kalutsi. Oh, right. So she's a, she's a wonderful drag superstar at Kalutsi Restaurant up in, in, in Karangahape on Karangahape Road. Um, and it was great to see her. I haven't seen her for ages and to catch up. That was lovely. Um, but it actually officially kicked off on Friday night yep. with our Rainbow Arts panel. Yeah, which I totally loved. Where I got to play Oprah and Sonny <laughs> Jesse Raphael and Ricky Lake. And, and you did. And, 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 and Jennifer Hudson and all, all yes. in one. Because I got to host it and it was great. And so was what was the intention? People. What was it about? Well, we know that we have a lot of creative people within the Rainbow community. But we do. it was more about who is who? Who are these people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's an exhibition going on currently at the Edel to Arts Village until the 2nd of September, so you have until Saturday, mm. um, to go view these rainbow works mm-hmm. from these beautifully talented people. So there was like the curator, who is Sierra Delacroix, mm-hmm. who's from Yatsiawa, yes. um, Ki Waitara, and also Nokone, so from mm. Tarawa as well. And then we have the lovely, beautiful Corey Flay, who I remember when they were just, I think, maybe 16 or 17, yeah. a little rainbow support group that we had. And so it's beautiful to see their journey to where they've, where they've come from from to where they are now. That was great. And was it Top Stitch? Is it Top Stitch? Top Stitch, yes. With His Will. medium, yeah, because we talk, because obviously they're both of them are artists, and you're like, so what is your medium? And mm. uh, sorry, the first lady, the, the Sarah. She, Sarah was, hers was oil, basically, mm. you know, mm. oil on canvas, mm. uh, painting, yeah. that was her medium. And then he, his was. Corey, well, his, they, uh, they, 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 yeah, yeah. medium was, was, was Top Stitch and, and I, I was completely blown away looking at the amount of work that was put into those pieces. Yeah. Well, it's essentially like, it's essentially creating a rug. Yeah. I wow. never, I, yeah. I couldn't fathom it. But I when I saw it on the screen, it, so. I was like, whoa, that's incredible. And the statement piece was really, you know, it's, 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 it's a beautiful, beautiful mm. story, beautiful journey. Um, so it was great to see them. And then we had a lovely title of Royal. Mm. Yes. From and how lucky Kalinga we had. Dance Company. Yeah, really, really great to have them because they they're actually doing World of Wearable Arts again. Mm-hmm. So Ty basically said, "No, I'm going to go to this panel, go yes. to this arts panel. I'm going to present, and then I'll jump in my little walker and make my way down to Wellington." And, mm. then, and then he did. So you good luck, Ty. But you're off doing that down there. He certainly loves to listen in. Mm. I loved it when you said, "When you, what is your pronoun?" And he said, "All of them." Yes. Pronouns are important at the moment. Absolutely. And I, I didn't want to, as a, as a host, to sort of um, error mm. to err mm-hmm. anyone with, 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 with the incorrect pronoun. So, you know, mm. both Sarah and Corey are they then? Yes. But then looking at Ty and knowing, we both know Ty yeah. very, very long ago. I met him when I was 13. Okay, you know them longer. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not a competition, <laughs> no, no, but, you yeah, know, like, I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Tai Tai, like, yeah. what are your pronouns? Yeah. And he was like, oh, he, him, she, her, yeah. they, them, they, them, auntie, uncle. Auntie, uncle. Yeah, yeah but yeah. to a fire. So I was like, oh, Kōia, Kōia. Kōia. Which is beautiful, which is why I love it. We had that in our Māori language, mm-hmm. Kōia. He, him or her. They or them. They or them. Yeah, non-gender specific. Love that. Thank you. Thank oh, we, you need to get, Marty. we need to get on TikTok and make it a pronoun, don't we? Qua- I yeah. think there are people who are, which is great. But, I mean, we haven't done it yet, so we should. I think I might make it in my um, signature. Yeah. Donald Hollingsworth. Yeah. He, him, ear. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's excellent. Nanu Turner Sarah. She, her, human, question mark. Question mark, Gender explanation mark. Yeah. 
Yeah. Apostrophe. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag court year. Yeah. Court that year. sounds great. Yes. Uh, I've been quite busy in the salon. Oh, no, actually, I haven't been that busy in the salon. No, I was really busy with, yesterday. You've been working with hair. You've been working with Yeah, working with a lot of hair and makeup. Yep. Uh, so we're Magoogie's developing. up in there. Magoogie, for those of you who don't know, is Queen Speak for weeks. Mm. Oh, Wiganoogie, Wiganoogie, yep. Wanoogie, Wanaroogie, whatever. Um, uh, but Huru Huru essentially. Huru Huru. Yes, uh, for Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which is exciting that it's coming Priscilla, here. Queen. Uh, really love the musical. Um, I've always loved it since I was in the early 90s when I was living in Sydney when it was being made. Um, and it was such, it's such a, a, it's it's a really, it's an incredible tale about three drag queens. Or one of them is a trans woman. And there's two drag queens and they go to the outback to perform for homophobes. And there's quite a lot that goes on. Yeah. There's quite a lot of homophobes. Yeah, and they change people's minds, basically. Change people's minds and change their perceptives. And that's the thing, you know, we we spoke about this last week. I think without without discussion, there can't be there can't be education. Without education, there can't be acceptance. Without acceptance, there can't be tolerance. So that's what they did, essentially, but through song, Mm. through popular disco numbers of the 70s and 80s. And there's a bit of homophobia. Like any good musical, you go through the full gamut of emotions, Mm. which is really important. Actually, originally, I understand that Michael Hutchins was going to play um, the Terence Stamp, Terence Stamp part. The trans oh, role. Yeah, was, was, oh, Bernadette. Yeah, but he passed. Wouldn't it have been beautiful? I mean, would Michael have been Hutchins incredible. Anyway. Yeah, it would He's have been incredible. I love them um, since working on it because it's actually a dream. Even though I know it's a local production, it is still a dream to work on it because I love it so much. I love all the songs that have got on it. You know, I remember when finally. I first heard it, I was like, really? Yeah. You're going to do that here? Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. One, that's brave. But two, that's not cool. Yeah. That's not cool. Yeah, it is. And it's still a story that is telling a tale of um, the way that we're still living. Mm. Really? I mean, yeah. again, it's, I mean, I think the biggest, one of the best things about Aotearoa and is also one of the worst things is that it takes us time to get used to things. Mm. So we often get things later. Than mm. everyone else does in the world, um, which is also which is both a gift and a curse yes. because it means that in order for things to shift, we often get things later, mm-hmm. so the response is a lot later. Yeah, um, but I mean, I know that here in Rotorua, um the response of drag queens is really positive. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've done a few shows where I've put on invited a few drag queens down from Auckland, and the response has been amazing yeah. and very very positive. And Siobhan's gig at the Good Eastern. Eatery, I think it was. Oh, and Ting Ai, Ting Ai Road. Uh, Ting Ai. Um, That was really, it was packed. Mm. I think they actually oversold tickets. Did they? Um, But she was fantastic. You know, she she did really well, commanded the whole whole crowd, got everyone laughing. Because that's a difficult location to do drag in, isn't it? Because it's essentially a restaurant and there's lots of walls. Restaurants are not, unless it's designed to be a restaurant for performance, restaurants are not the best places to be doing performances in, especially drag performances. Because you're not working a stage, you're working all the floor. Yeah. And you've got, you know, everyone's got these pillars in the way and, you know, people are in different sections, like booths and everything. Mm. And she navigated it so well. She's really professional. I'm really, really glad that um, she had the opportunity opportunity to do that. So hopefully, we might be able to organise the show and get it down to a couple of numbers. Mm, Bring it back. But yeah. she was great. She was funny, especially. I mean, a drag bingo. I, I never sort of. I've never been to a drag bingo. Mm. Like, oh, we yeah. discussed it last week, actually. Drag back, drag bingo. Yeah, I've been to, I've been to You've got to be really funny. Kind of once, and I mean, and I helped a friend, um, a fellow queen, Chichi Lacroix, to do drag bingo in in, in Tauranga years and years ago, and I had no idea what I was doing. So mm. you know. But Chichi. you gave it a go. I gave it a go. Yeah. Like, were I, you like me when you were a little? Did you go with one of your aunties no, to the bingo to uh, to Housey? You never you went, went to Housey. No, I wasn't interested in Housey. Um, no, I wasn't um, interested. I was just interested in going. Oh, my I auntie. never even went. I just never, never was a really sort of big thing in Mutupara. It was bigger in Rotorua, but I still. Oh, there were no house in. So I did have that. They think like two fat ladies, eighty-eight, oh, yeah. leaves <laughs> eleven. You know, whereas Chichi was really, really well versed in that. Yes. That kind of caught it all, so she was fantastic. Then she gave me a turn, and I was like. Um, one, two, twelve, <laughs> two, four, twenty-four. Yeah, and do you find when you're more confident, you have a bigger voice? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I, mean, I was just—I mean, I had a mic, so it was great. But I was yeah. just like, I was like, just umming and ahhing through the whole. Puzzles. I felt so sorry for the whiner who were there. I was like, look, so I just put out numbers because I can't do this 
funny rhyme thingies. But Siobhan was amazing. She was yeah. you know, 64, your mum's a whore. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, 64, your mum's yeah, a whore. 22, do a poo. Or two, <laughs> two ducks, I don't know, two ducks in a row. Um, whatever it was. But it was all nice and camp fun. It was mm. very good fun. Anyway, I, think, I believe everyone enjoyed themselves, which is the main thing. What I love about Kaluzzi and those sort of, um, there's not that many restaurants like that. You know, family's a little bit like, it means that, Certain drag queens and certain performers can have that as a full time job, mm-hmm. you know, and um, live off it, you know. Make a um, living. Make a yeah, living. yeah. Make so a you, so you, and you, and you can make a decent living. So where does that sit? You know, with say a trans woman, have you always? How have you gone with applying for work? Like, you know, what did you think when you were a young girl? What am I going to do with my life? It's funny because I think everyone just assumed that I would either be a hairdresser <laughs> or a makeup artist or something like that. Yeah. And, I, and I have no natural ability in any of those fields. Um, I don't do I do what I do to get by, um, but that's about it. And I, hospitality was probably my go-to because I could yeah. be mean as flamboyantly or as freely me as possible yes. without creating too much of an uncomfortable situation for patrons because mm-hmm. they just sort of just expect you to be kind of camp and over the top and, and, over the top and flight yeah. and they're like, yeah, we love this. You know, you know, buy, give me another wine. And I'm like, yeah, yeah so buy, I'm getting you a bottle. Um, <clears throat> what, what's your first job? Hospital. Hospital. A bar, a restaurant. Actually, my very first job, my very first yeah. job ever, I was 15 years old and I worked in the, um, I was in the local takeaways. Mm-hmm. Frying fish and chips and burgers. Okay. And stuff. That wasn't with Uppy's mum, was it? No, oh, okay. no, 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 no. That's a sad Sorry, sorry. Sorry, they audience. Already, that they was already, yeah, they had already moved oh, had they? two dollars to work by that time. Because um, people ask me, fun. how did I become a hairdresser and why did I become a mm. hairdresser? And I will always say that when I start, I started in a little salon here. I grew up in Rotorua. It was called, I started there in 1987. Um, and even when, actually, sorry, my first job was actually with the International Hotel, but it was being a kitchen hand. Because mm. I was just, a, you know, I was 15. Mm. And my father said to me, you've got to get a job. You can't stay home and watch Oprah Winfrey with your mother all the time. Why not? And don't just get a job. You know, exactly. <laughs> Why not? I love Oprah. And so he was like, don't just get a job, get a trade. And I didn't get a job when I was like, you know, one of my cousins, Mavis, was working at the International and she said, I can get you a job in the kitchen. Mm. And um, I loved cleaning, so I was into it and did really well for, I think I was there for about a year. But I would always put my hands up to do the overnight job in the weekend where you cleaned the vents because you made more money. In 1985, I was getting $15 an hour to do the overnight shift. In 1985. In 1985. Shit, that's all, that's but I didn't mind cleaning. I didn't mind, you know, the vents, you mm-hmm. know, up in that. With, they would probably have a professional company do it now because, you know, back in the day, they got us to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I... Small enough to sit and shove up there and go, yeah, you yeah. might die. And I loved my dad because I would say to him, oh, Dad, I missed the bus home. And he says, well, you have to walk because I'm drinking now. Isn't dad. It? <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Sorry, no, we can't keep it. Yeah, I had a drink now. But the thing is, like, there were lots of people who did try and drink back then. Anyway. Yeah, well, that's true. It was 1985. That's another story. Um, and then I was like, I um, didn't want to, I really wanted to hairdress because my sister was a hairdress, sir, and I used to, or hairdress, sir, and I used to go up to Auckland to be her model, her training model. Mm. And then I'd come back to school with bright red hair and bright blonde hair and stuff like that, and all these things. Uh, I was going to Western Heights. I was actually singled out at a big assembly uh, where my hair was really bright and the, uh, the, um, the principal at the time, his name was Mr. Barrowman, I think, and he was like, um, boys are not to colour their hair, Mr. Hollingsworth. And I was like, actually, my hair's bright red and I prefer to be called Miss Hollingsworth at that time. Uh, but, <laughs> well, you know, no one cares about that now, really, do they? They no. can try and everybody's colouring their hair. Everyone's colouring their hair, their eyebrows, and the, yeah, you know, their facial the hair. Facial hair, you can't control them. No. Um, and then I, I got an apprenticeship in a salon which was called Cut and Curl, and I worked there for three years, and then I moved to Auckland. So, Cece, you did get a trade. Yeah, I did eventually, and he, and he was very happy about it, Dad. Yeah. And I, mean, I was, because he said to me, I'm glad you got a trade, son, because you can take it anywhere. And I did. Well, once I, I remember in high school, we... we there was a whole thing about hospitality, tourism, yeah. all of that stuff. And, and because I wasn't sure what to do, I thought, yeah, I'll go for that. Mm. And then I realised I had a bit of a natural ability with being personable, mm-hmm. um, 
pop, you know, speaking to people without being afraid to speak to them, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. I could carry more than three plates really well. It was, yep. it was just sort of a natural progression. So when I finally decided to move to Australia when I was about 17, um, I went into hospital. From Murupara. From Murupara. So I gained some qualifications in Murupara, moved to Rotorua, did another course at Araki Academy. Did you always think that you would move to Rotorua? No. No, Rotorua was never even in sort of my scope of places. I didn't mm. think I'd move out of Murupara, to be honest. Wow. It, wasn't, it wasn't a thing to sort of think beyond that space. You're right. But I knew when I was 17, I was, Murupara was just too small. Mm. It was too small a place for me to grow. Yeah. And, and I was finding myself sort of feeling more closed in. Wow. And I missed, I mean, I hated leaving my dad, but my dad was good. He was yeah. like, no, I need to just don't, don't fuck it up. Yeah. And so I didn't. Yeah. Well, I, I did, but later. Um, I know we loved our dad, mm. so. Yeah, for people like us right. to have the biggest supporters in our life be our fathers. Yeah, and he was a blackie bloke. Like he, he, Same he, with my dad. Hunting, fishing, yeah. um, everything. You know, he, yep. worked, he worked on the railways. He would work long hours, come yep. back, drink yep. with his mates. And that was, you know, yep. that was his life. That, and and yep. so to have this... Out of the ordinary person. <laughs> out of the ordinary and person. And as one of your kids. Yeah. You know, that often, like, his mates were like, uh, is that your, is that your child? Like, yeah. yep, that's my baby. Yeah, it's my that's baby. my baby. Sing us a song, my baby. Yeah, and then you would. Oh, you to tell me why you want that on. Because it was a... Oh, you did those, oh, those garage yeah, songs. I did all those garage ditties yeah. and stuff. Charlie so, Pride. Yeah, I did my... Would you? In this cafe. As and a little girl. And then they would, like, they would just... They would enjoy themselves. It would you yeah. know, change the, the, the atmosphere of the night. And then everyone's like, sing another song, bye bye. And I'm like, yeah, or bub. Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, that was kind of my my, my grounding in it. But then moving to Dorset sort of, and working in Hospo, I mm. realized it was not harder than I thought it was. Um, nervous as shit. Mm. Because I, I'd encountered. Would you worry you would be accepted? Yeah. I'd encountered moody. Oh, yeah, but chefs. that's them. My goodness. <laughs> I was I, I one chef I because I didn't I without thinking I grabbed a plate it was hot and I put it back down and there was a stack and the stack fell mm. and I just he didn't even look out from his shopping board mm. um from what he was doing he was like if you do that again I'm going to cut your fucking fingers off <laughs> I said well you can go get fucked because even though I'm a very gentle soul <laughs> you are I was raised in Murray Potter yes. <laughs> and I take shit from everyone <laughs> um, so I was like well you can get fucked and I stormed out the restaurant, but I, I made sure to make myself busy in the restaurant, so I didn't need to go actually go back in. Into the kitchen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the hospital was my thing. Then I went to bars. Yeah. Took it to bars. Bars was a different story because it's the later finish, and mm. you know, it's like you're, you're finishing when people are going to work, and yeah. So that was a completely different um, style of life, I guess, for me. Seeing you're cleaning up. Sp- all manner of yeah. messes of mess yeah. from people in these bar toilets. Yeah. When I worked at Finale hosting up there, that drag restaurant mm. that opened up there with all the old histories for people from a past, you know, Felicia Pushet, uh Tane Mite was oh, there and he Mite, was yeah. uh he was um what did he call him? I can't remember. Anyway, um if somebody threw up in the bathroom, if you saw it, you had to clean it up. You had to clean it up. Yeah. The first person yeah. to see Vomit. You clean it up. You saw it. So sometimes I would be like, oh, no, I haven't been in the bathroom. You know, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no. <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. No, I never saw that. Mm. It wasn't there when I went in. Because it's not pleasant doing that, isn't no, it, cleaning up? Mm. So, you know, with hairdressing, um, and I would say this to anybody, I actually did a feature when I used to uh, work on a TV show at, on Māori television called Weddle. Uh, and it was a, you know, Takatapui lifestyle show. And I did a story about why Takatapui choose uh, certain work. And hospitality, you get accepted. Well, Hairdressing, yeah. you get accepted. Yeah. Makeup fashion. artistry, fashion. Mm. And you just get accepted. Mm. And you need to get accepted in the workplace because it really is quite debilitating if you're not accepted. Because that's what we really want is just to be accepted. Just be- We work really hard just because we're a little bit different and you're looking at somebody different, we still want to be accepted. Well, I mean, I, 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 when I think about it now, because I've been, been, you know, been, we've both been in hospital, we both know what it's like. I see some of our waiting staff now are not trained properly mm. because 
your whole entire purpose of your, your mahi is to give people an experience. Yes. That doesn't mean that when they walk in, you go, hi, how are you? Come to this table. Mm. Um, we don't have this. You know, it's like it's like you, you need a personality for that. You need to have the ability to welcome people, mm. to make them feel relaxed, to make them feel comfortable. So they keep buying. They yeah. keep eating. They stay. They come back. Mm. They tell people. Um because they're just looking dead yeah. in their eyes lately. I, mean, I went out to buy coffee the other day and I was like, are you happy with what you're doing? I said the same thing. I yeah. said to a waitress, I said, are you okay? Yeah. And she's like, I'm okay. I said, are you sure? Because you don't look like you've yeah. been here. And honestly, if you don't, don't come. Yeah, don't come. Yeah, said, yeah. Because people pay for an experience. This yeah. is not the experience. Even buying coffee. For. Yeah. Are you almost now compelled to kind of be a therapist or, yeah. or to sort of offer some sort of counsel? But my counsel was like, sort it out, don't fuck it up. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. can tell people. Yes. Um, and that's how they, that's the nature of their job. And so I was very lucky to be in places where I was appreciated. Yeah. Um, and given responsibilities. Mm. Um, one of the longest places I worked at was Tapuya, which I loved. I loved working at Tapuya because it was, you know, a cultural mecca yeah. or a cultural centre of our is. people. Where we got to dispel myths about Māori people to people. What, what is Tapuya? Oh, Tapuya is a geothermal experience. Yeah. So, you know, it's the valley in Te Whakarewa o Te Ope Tawa Wahia, geothermal valley, and, you know, the, the world-famous geysers in there, mm. which go the once two. per hour normally. Depending yep. on, sometimes they don't, but that's a natural thing. We don't control that. Um, and we, you know, we do weddings and yeah. birthdays. And I remember serving the king and queen of Tonga mm. once for breakfast, and oh, and that was that was a harrowing experience because their entourage sent us a form saying, "You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't look them in the eyes." You know, oh wow! Us. You know, so so we were there. We we um. They couldn't be. They couldn't be seen eating in the same area as the the entourage. So we we set up a beautiful kind of not a not a barrier, but like, mm. um a facade of plants, native plants, mm-hmm. and and carvings and artwork and stuff, just to sort of divide the space. And then the king and queen are talking about, like, why can we not see our people? And like, this is oh, the group that we were sent from, this is what was requested from your people. Yeah. Um, and then not even. Did you them, serve them by yourself? I served them myself. Yeah. Um, the King and Queen of Tonga, the beautiful people, lovely. See, that's incredible, Nanu, because they wanted you to serve them well, because the you would have said, served them the way that you did. Well, I, I kind of drew the short straw. I didn't want to. But was, oh, you didn't? Like, no, you can do it. I was like, fuck. Um, <laughs> and so I'm like, I've got my head down, like, I'm the, your majesty, her majesty, um, your royal highness, all of that stuff, um, mm-hmm. as you do. And the wife had said to her husband, the king, why is she not looking at me? Oh wow! And so he called Mary. He says, well, uh, "My wife would like to know. My wife would like wants to know why you're not looking." And I said, "Please forgive me, Your Highness. Um, we were told that we weren't allowed to look at you in the eyes." And I sort of my head, and he goes, "Who's he doing?" I said, "You're on drugs." Because they want you to look at them. And he said, the Pacific Cup, and, uh, yeah. and I just, but because we did, we never encountered them before. It was, you know, there were all these. The, the entourage were like these. That these are the things we need to do. Mm. So, in the end, they had a fantastic time. It was a guy. It was a breakfast by the guys. Uh, poor who two went off just as we were serving the last parts oh. of their meal. You know, sounds magical. It was. It was wonderful, and I loved it there. Mm. Um, it was a beautiful eleven years. I think I worked there eleven times. Do. Why did you leave? Um, COVID. COVID got us released. What was that like? That was done. <laughs> that was done. I left a place where I felt We safe. can say it's done now because it's all finished. Yeah. I left a place where I felt really safe. And How did they... What, what happened? I was just... Um, once, it, once it was declared that there was, there was a COVID yep. case in the area and that, that, that we were shutting down, um, the entire place was shutting down, so they just basically had a meeting and said, this is it. Wow. Who did they keep? I can't remember. Yeah. I, I, the funny thing was, I wasn't. It's at so meeting. blurry, isn't I it? Now because it was such I, a. I was still serving people, so I was still front line. So I was still serving you were people. Working. Oh, the rest of our team were being told what was happening, and then I remember sort of serving people and saying, "You know, I'm the the chill relief from point number one on your map. You're the little check. You know, forty five minutes around to the to the valley, blah blah blah." And there were staff members coming out, no crying. Oh, no, visibly no. upset, visibly emotional um, about what's oh happening. God. And I had to close the door on a few people because you can hear them crying in the office. And so I was like, oh, they would have been I'm so sorry. Um, and then one thing, oh, yes, sir, at the end of your tour, you have the opportunity, you know, just continuing mahi as you do because this is what you do. Um, not fully realising, shit, this is it. You had literally lost your job. Hmm. Where were you going to go? Didn't know. 
had no idea. He was wow. very, very scared about that. He was like, where am I going to go? Where am I going to accept me? Yeah. I mean, and it took Tupui. I mean, Tupui was fantastic. Like, they accepted me through the entire, because I basically transitioned through my time at Tupui. Yeah, um, so it was a really like, special everyone was, place. Everyone was okay with it. Everyone was embracing of it. Except maybe two people. One of them was one of our managers. She was a bit of a bitch. Um, and she would always sit there and kind of use the wrong pronouns and use sort of, you know, purposely. It felt purposeful. Mm. Like, it was like, yeah. just to kind of help me. Yeah. And I remember her saying, do people ever wonder, like, do people, like, do any of our customers come up and ask you whether you're a, whether you're a boy or a girl? I was like, no. She's like, really? I said, well, no, because they're not worried about that. They're there to buy tickets to an experience. My gender or my identity has nothing to do with that. Yeah. The only people that care are the people who are a little bit paranoid, like you. Yeah. What, what was she paranoid of? Oh, who knows? I, I have no idea. There wasn't, that's yeah. her story, not mine. Yeah, right. Um, but, yeah, she was, a, she was an interesting person. She'll probably so, see me now and be hi, Tom's. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Other trans women that I've always loved and been very close to, and I've had lots of conversations with them about it, sometimes it's just choosing. What is it choosing? You know, they've got to sort of think, what sort of work am I going to do? And then they just end up choosing, you know, sometimes prostitution, and it makes it difficult and hard when you think about your futures because they've always just end up having to choose that for themselves, which is also quite difficult, which is also is, is sad, I think, sometimes having to choose that. Um, because sometimes there are people like that, I actually don't want to be a prostitute. I don't want to do that for myself. But what is there something else I can do? And there are plenty of work that you can do, but not everybody wants to be a hairdresser. Not everybody wants to be a fashion designer. Not everybody wants to be a makeup artist. Not everybody wants to do that sort of work. Um, but I did love hairdressing, I remember there was one specific time that I was uh, 17 at the time when I was working in this little salon in Ottawa Street, which is a little street in Rotorua. The salon was actually called Cut and Curl, so I really did have quite simple and basic uh, uh, startings, um, and she, or beginnings, and I remember this gentleman came into the salon for a haircut um, and he sat down in the chair and he looked at and um, I asked him how he'd like me to cut my hair and he says, oh, I need to see your boss. And I went, oh, okay. So I went over and got my boss and she came and she goes, I don't want that faggot cutting my hair. <gasps> and I was like, wow, okay. And Christine said, well, we don't want to cut your hair. And that's when I instantly found accepted. That, as soon as she said that, and I will always remember Christine, she's passed on now. So Isn't I was. That beautiful though, that just. Yeah. Just Even people, in 1987. There were people in that time who had you, you know, they yeah. you, had you back. in your corner. Yeah. They were your support system. And that's when I felt accepted. And that's when I felt this is a career for me. And look where, you know, what I ended up doing and where it's taken me. We have very, um, you and I, we have quite uh, simple upbringings or simple beginnings. Yes. You know, I couldn't stay at school. I tried to stay at school. I loved school. I loved English. I loved. The, I learned how to play the violin, play the piano. I love, I didn't want to do sport. I learned how to play chess really well and all that sort of stuff. But could I sit in a classroom without being hassled? Could I catch the bus home without being hassled? No, I couldn't. Mm. I couldn't. So it was kind of, I sort of pretty much left school at 14. Yeah. yeah and no one would help I me. I lasted until 17. Yeah. I became a prefect. But I, I'd realised then very, very long, even before then, that, that, the system wasn't designed for me and that I wasn't going to get anything beneficial out of staying there, staying mm. on. Um, but the introduction to HOSPO sort of went, oh, yeah. she gave me something to look at because I had no idea. I had no idea. All I knew was I loved singing, um, I loved performing, but that one's going to pay my bills. No. <laughs> it will soon, though, won't it? I bloody hope so. <laughs> I'm in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so give me. I mean, I'm very, very, very happy and very fortunate to to be given the opportunity to perform at different places. Yes, just for being me. Um, whether it be like providing uh, ambient dinner music while people are dining. I know that's my favourite thing because I don't have to sort of push anything. I can just sing like really sort of you know simple songs. Yeah. Um, just to create an atmosphere, or whether it be hosting events or doing full on. Performances alongside drag queens. Mm. You know, that that's, that's. I mean, it, initially it never paid the bills because it was like, there's always for Aroha. Oh, well, no, we don't have a budget, but, you know, it's great exposure yeah. for you. Exactly. And I'm like, no, I'm like, How much exposure, much exposure do I need? I, people know who I am, pay me. <laughs> so why, um, did you ever come up against a time where you sort of thought, 
Do I need to be a prostitute? Uh, do I need to be a working girl? Do I need no, to hit the straws uh, no, up? because it wasn't... I mean, this is where, this is why I'm thankful that I met my sisters yeah. who, who did work the streets um, for their courage and their, their tenacity. Oh, absolutely, and their courage. Because, um, you know, that's when our trans sisters are being abused. Yeah, because they couldn't find jobs. They went out to find jobs. Jobs were not afforded them. No. Because they were not considered human. Mm. Or less than. Um, so I was lucky that I, I had a mind. I was reasonably smart um, and, st- and kind of, you know. And also, I think my personality kind of shone through a lot, which got me a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, but do, did it make me any better than, than, than our sisters who worked on the streets? Absolutely not. Not. Because yeah. they survived. Yes. You know, they had to, they had to learn how to survive, and they did. Mm-hmm. And they, they're still, you know, the those of them are still here. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's fucking amazing to have that, to have to be around people who are like, you know, who where the world was like, you know what, I don't necessarily like you, but but, but this is what we're going to do. Yes. So a lot of it, like, did Chanel work? Um, I don't think we actually talked about that. I mean, I've only ever just known her as a, as a fierce drag yeah, performer. So, so maybe those. she did, I don't know. Um, and maybe we'll have to get her on the show to sit in and, we have and to. discuss that herself, maybe. Because um, it'll be great. Um, but I knew I knew how, how, how difficult it was to to be different in, in, a, in a working space because back then not everyone had to employ you. Um, I was just very fortunate that I was given chances where I could come in. My whole thing is, if I've ever applied for a job, my 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 sure is once I hit, if I can get the interview, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a sure at the interview because I learned to sell myself well with my personality and just being, you know, upbeat and jovial and all of that stuff and and just being very real and truthful, um, which I found has worked in my favour a lot. Especially where I work now. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely stuff worth thinking about because I know that there are many whanau or many sisters out there who weren't afforded the same opportunities, um, who had no choice but to, um, to to sell themselves on the streets and do what they can. And there were some who made very, you know, very lucrative um earnings through it because they're you know they're very professional about what they did <laughs> and then there were others who sort of you know didn't last or didn't survive as much or but to those who did thank you yeah thank, thank you because you. you're a lot you know i mean and people often thought that being in that space or, or being a sex worker made you in, unintelligent or done but mm. these these girls were clued up always they knew the ins and outs of everything when I first moved to Sydney, oh, not when I first moved to Sydney, but when I was in Sydney in the uh, early 90s, there was a series of uh, uh, transgender women that I used to look after, that I used to give them Bridget Bardot hairdos. Mm. And, you know, in the 90s, I love it. Sydney was such a different place in the 90s. There was a, they used to call it the Straza, which was essentially William Street, where they would work. And on Saturday nights, Friday nights, Saturday nights, we would have cars go up King's Cross, down by the water, and then up along the Straza or William Street. And these women were an average of six foot two, normally. In heels, they would be seven foot. Yes, seven foot. Yeah. And they were fantasies. Yeah. And how I would say they were fantasies, because the Straza or William Street at that time, you could wear high heels, a G-string, and carry a Chanel handbag mm. with these incredible hairdos. Yes, yes. You know, and they were essentially naked, um, and it made them incredibly popular. And you know what? And I would always say to them, has anyone touched your hair? And they're like, they're not allowed to touch my hair, Joel. They don't touch my hair, do. And I, and I, I made a lot of money out of them. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I love them I as clients. Because of the fantasy of it. Yes. They wouldn't touch the hair. No. You know what I mean? Because they would destroy the fantasy yeah. somehow. And you wouldn't want to just... I mean, this is this is the biggest thing about, about our trans whanau is that we're often buying into a fantasy. Yeah, right. Fetish. Yeah. We're often, we, we, you know, all the time universally fetishized. Mm-hmm. And don't you just want to be loved? Well, I want money, but 
<laughs> I'm being honest. I want yeah. fucking money. Um, but I mean, you know, love you can find love. But yes, yes. I mean, especially for our trans family, they do. They just want someone to sit there and just love them, and them. be there in the morning, someone to argue with, Thank you, you know, someone to sit there and cook for, or, you know, moan it because they leave the toilet seat up, or whatever the bloody hell is, you know. They mm. just want to be, I feel a sense of, of belonging and mm. being normal. You know, being and normal what is even normal is? All that stuff. I mean, the amount of DMs I have where people are like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, no, sing that shorts. Yeah. I'm not, I don't do, I don't do lacy stuff. I think it's really, really impractical. Yeah. Um, and I'm not here to sell a fantasy, so I'm just very, very down to earth. Mm. Even when I'm dressing for like shows and stuff, you know, like we're like three pairs of spanks and five pairs of hose and yeah. and all that stuff. It's not comfortable. It yeah. is not comfortable. It's um, to be a diva, to be a yeah, singer, exactly. to be a performer, exactly. to and be a show. The fact that they expect you to be that afterwards, it's like, I've performed. I've worn this face for like five, six hours. Yes. I'm p- p- performing for three hours, and you want me to keep this seat to see mm. her? You better have some fucking money. Yes. <laughs> to pay for like a bed and breakfast, which we never get. We never get the bed and breakfast. No. We always get the oh, just over here in the, in the alleyway, and like that. Yeah, really quick. Paru, how paru is that? Yeah, it is paru. Um, and sorry, not to say that our trans sisters are paru for doing that. No. But that's, that's where they request them to go. Them. That's, you know, it's like, no, if you don't think I'm, I'm <clears> worthy to be seen anywhere else, why the fuck should I be giving you my time in this space? Mm. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, um, yeah, that's that's what makes the whole thing really sad because, you know, we sit there with our trans sisters and just love them and just love to socialise with and them. What and what I then, love now is that, that have, I we have our trans sisters in money. Yeah. Whether it be advocacy or working at MSD yeah. or working for, you know, beautiful organisations that help our most vulnerable. Why? Because they know. Yeah. They know the And that's else. where they are genuinely working, yeah. to help the most vulnerable. And they're revered. They're yeah. revered because they have so much lived experience. Like, I mean, I, I think I have lived experience, but nowhere near what they have. Mm. Nowhere near what our trans family have. Or even, even our, sorry, even our, um, the rest of our LGBTQIPA plus Fano, who went through those chopping times in the early years of the 80s and 70s and stuff, they learnt a whole lot of shit. Yeah, they did. They, you know, their survival skills are far beyond mine. Mm. I was really lucky because I was the baby of six people, so I always had people sort of looking after me. Mm. And I could charm my way to people looking after me too. Yes. Um, but, you know, so big mahi to them. Big mahi to them. Yeah. Without, um, without them, you know, I probably the most of the people that I met when I was 14, 15, would have been trans sisters, mm. and they direct you in the right way to help you to understand. It's to tell the truth, it's not even that serious. The thing about having a trans sister as your friend is the humor, oh, yeah, and the, yeah. the reading, and it's, you it's know, the, the practical, joking. real life yes. shit. Like, yes. They will tell you. They will if you tell you. Ugly, they yeah. will tell they you. will tell you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They will tell you too. And you can give it straight back too. Yeah. They will <laughs> yeah. stab you in the front. They will not <laughs> yeah. stab you in the back. They will stab you right in the, front in the front and make sure that you know because they want to make sure that you are better. Mm. They want you to because they've had to be better all their lives. Yeah. We've, you know, we as trans fighters have had to be better than. This is why I often get called an overachiever because I want to be the best at what I can do. Yeah. But and then who you can be. That. Yes. Because I'm not just, I'm not competing with myself. I'm competing with other people who go, well, I can do that. Well, they can't really, but you. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you, that's fine if you can. Mm. Um, but I just want to know that. I, I, want, I like being secure in the fact that I know what I know. Mm. What about dating? That's a what good segue. You what about dating? Eh? Money. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. terrible. I mean, <laughs> I don't. Do people approach I you on, in the streets? I, I might have been on like maybe two, three dates in my entire existence. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, the majority of them are all fetishists of like, you know, what are you wearing? Are you wearing like silk panties? And I'm like, no, I'm wearing like a rugby shorts and a singlet because it's hot. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and, you know, I'll be like, um, are you going to be my naughty little girl? No, I'm not. <laughs> My naughty little girl. Well, hey, and what do you mean by naughty? Do you want yeah. to punch you in the head? Yeah. <laughs> or just, you know, smack you out the side of the head with a frying pan if you want? Um, you know, it's, it's, I can't believe, because I know, you know, because, you know, we're friends, and I can't believe that people will talk to you like that. I seriously can't. Well, no one does anymore. But when right. I was younger, that was what I got. Are you going to be like, dirty little secret? And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And where were you, where, when you were younger, where were they, meeting, where were they saying this? 
Oh, like through social media. Social media, yeah. right. So Bebo. Bevo. Because I didn't do apps. Like we no. touched on it before. I, yeah. I, I, I never did any apps. I tried it once and just done. Um, and then when I meet like, you know, some sort of out of the way place and I'm like, that's dangerous. Yeah, that what too. Know what I do. I'm not stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, because, yeah, Danny, uh, one day I do remember, I know you. It was funny because we spoke on Facebook for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And we established that we kind of liked similar things. And so we thought we'd go to the movies together and say, well, I'll meet you there because oh. I'll, I'll be there. The you know, movie starts about, I think I bought, yeah, I bought the tickets. You I bought, bought the tickets. I bought the tickets. I bought the snacks. <laughs> um, red flag were really right. And I did I pay attention to it? No, I didn't. And I thought, no, nah, this is cool. Um, and we, he, He's, I'm on my phone. I'm like, where are you? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm just coming up the road now. And I'm looking down the road and looking at this person going, really? Is that how it is? It's like, can't be. Anyway, so I'm standing there and he walks past and then he looks back and he's like, no, no. I'm like, oh, it is you. <laughs> and who was it? Oh, and he was short. Oh. Like, short. He came up to me. Well, you're shorter than me. I'm not that much taller. I'm only like 5'11". Five, like five yeah, yeah, you're five, smaller. Um, so I'm six four. Yeah, so, so I'm five, smaller than me. About five eight, five four. No, so maybe and he five was ten at the four moment. eight. He was probably I don't know a hobbit, but um, oh. I was I and it wasn't. There so wasn't he was blow drop height. There wasn't it. Sorry for you, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was just the awkwardness. And mm. I tried to do everything. So I said, I've bought snacks, I've bought those. And I was, like, I was like, oh, I don't like those those ones. And I said, well, you can get your own then. <laughs> and I just fucking eat those. Yeah. Um, he ate the popcorn and stuff. And he was like, he was nervous. He was just sitting there. I was like, are you okay? And he was like, um, yeah. I said, well, you don't look okay. You look yeah. like you're either going to vomit or, <laughs> or, or faint. <laughs> but I think it's because I was so tall that that's what intimidated him. Okay. And then he just said, no, I can't. I can't. Um, but then he started there. I, I was confronted with a tirade of like, "You used me." Um, but you bought the I tickets. Like, I used you, bitch. I bought the tickets. I bought your fucking stupid snacks. I used you. And he was like, "Oh, you just you you strung me along with it to do what?" Yeah. And it had nothing. He was like, "You had nothing to do with the fact that you were you, you're a hobbit." Mm. It was just the fact that you were so nervous after spouting to me that you were like confident and didn't care and blah 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 blah. So I was like, "That's it." That's, so that's, I, that may have actually sort of brought on my feelings of being asexual. So yeah, right. Like, this is not it. Yeah. What about you? I know you have some <laughs> things to read. Oh, I've had a few, you know, because I'm definitely, I'm Takatapu, you know, I've lived in all the cities. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's, <laughs> yeah. I want to just, I want to touch on something a little bit from last time, from about two months ago. I decided oh, one day that I would get on Grinder oh, yeah, and have a little yeah. bit of fun, you know. And so I got on Grinder and I put something up, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'd spoken, I'd spoken to a couple of boys over a couple of weekends, and had one on a Saturday, and one on a Sunday night. And I was feeling quite confident. I mean, I'm confident when I want to go and look for somebody or do that, but some, it just hasn't happened a bit because I'm not lonely and I'm not a um, oh, you know, I'm a, you know, I need to. I'm not like I was when I was in my 20s, because I'm in my 50s now. And in my 20s, oh, every five minutes I needed something. Anyway, I got on Grinder and I was talking to this think guy. I it stops until like well after the 40s. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's true. If I think about my 40s too. When I think about my friends, <laughs> my, my gay friends. Yeah. The entirety of their 20s and 30s is like, I'm so lonely, I need someone. <sighs> Like, no, it's not a lonely thing. It's just more of a kind of itchy and scratchy thing yeah, where you, you know, need to fulfill. They it. they yeah, they, 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 it's, it's then interpreted as the, the sexual need is then interpreted as loneliness, as loneliness because they don't want to be by themselves. And I'm like, well, don't be. Yeah, you yeah, don't be. So I, I was talking to a guy for a couple of days. We started a conversation on the Friday. And then on Saturday, we're still talking, just through texting, through uh, Grinder, And then by Sunday, I thought, oh, well, yeah, okay. And he goes, I said, what are you doing tonight? And he was like, oh, I don't very much. And I said, do you want to come over? And he went, all right, I'd love to come over. So he decided to come over and came over quite late at night. It was about 10 o'clock because essentially the intention is to have sex. It's not to what, hold hands. People, and, what, why is it so late? I mean... 10 o'clock's actually pretty reasonable. Yeah. But often, like, I used to get, like, called at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm after... Like, I am sleeping. Yeah, I'm scared of those I'm 2 o'clock calls. I'm, I'm investigating the inside of my eyeballs right now. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm looking at. I'm scared of them. They're either drunk or they're on meth. Yeah, because why would you be, like, that? Yeah, at that I mean, time. But drunk is okay. 
Yeah, drunk is okay. But, me- but sometimes being drunk, sometimes, you know, they have the, you know, that little problem where they can't. You know, get it up. Oh, oh, the inchworm. Yeah, the inchworm. Yeah. Inchworm. Yes. Inchworm. <laughs> inchworm. But anyway. This, gent- <laughs> this gentleman turned up and uh, I'm at the door and I see him coming up the door and I, so I looked at his photos and I was like, oh, yeah, And what have you got like, this way? No, it looked like Mr. Photo. Turns. From, oh, oh, from his photos, he was had a bald head and I quite like bald men and that's fine. Bald um, men denotes intelligence. Yeah, that too. And he was attractive. And he was certainly certainly my type 20 years ago. Money to me. Now he's 18. He was Mr. Burns Burns from The Simpsons. The only thing that was missing. Old old gentleman. You know, when they shuffle up the path. He was shuffling. Yeah, he was. And I just thought, (laughs) two things. Excuse me, two things. I might break him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was keen. But I wasn't keen when I saw him. And then he came in. Well, because there was a level, there has to be a level of physical attraction, right? Well, that too, absolutely. So he came to the door and I went, hey, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Listen, you're nothing like your photo. And then he goes, oh, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. A couple? couple. A couple. About 20. <laughs> and then I looked at him and I said, I'm so sorry, nothing will happen tonight, but you can come in. You've come over from Tauranga. I'll make you a cuppa. <laughs> make you a cup of tea. I'll make you a cup of tea. You, some super yeah, yeah, you want a, a super wine? For your yeah. yeah, and maybe a ginger wine. Uh, what is it? Ginger, <laughs> ginger nut. Ginger nut. Yeah, ginger well, nut. Because those are the only nut. nuts you're going to be getting. <laughs> and then he sat down on the couch and he looked at me and he goes, I've had a Viagra. Oh, shit, no. Yeah, I know. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go to bed, oh, and uh, I can leave you with some porn. Oh, no. <laughs> and he went, oh, no, we'll just go home. And I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't feel unsafe. No wonder he was. No wonder he couldn't walk, though. No wonder he was shuffling. Well, that, I mean, how much blood Vi- do you have as an 80-some-year-old man? Well, a Viagra, I actually think the Vi- when he saw me, the Viagra came on straight away, because that's what oh. happens with it, because you've not had Viagra. And that's I kind of what... <laughs> But it is. No yeah, so, well, Viagra is actually, you know, it gives you an erection. That's. I mean, you know, I know it does. I just but you just do have to it. initiate it. Oh. Yeah, you don't, so it doesn't he's like just. Hipster. Well, yeah, and he looked at me and he was like, whoa, oh, yeah, God. shit, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pinky fella. That big tall fella. <laughs> big big, big Marley fella. <laughs> <laughs> look at him, he's my fantasy. And I was like, well, you're not mine because you're like faint, Mr. Burns from the Simpsons. Don't faint, Don't yeah. faint, Matua, honestly. All of that, I was worried about his blood pressure. Yes. With having the Viagra. So that's why I said, you should sit down. I'm at your cuppa. Um, and then he just left. He shuffled his way out. And you didn't um, help him? No. You get him a walker or I just him. couldn't. No, I couldn't even help him. Pick him up and carry him to <laughs> his car. I couldn't even give him any kind of sexual relief. Well, I, mean, I think because some of the gays into, think this, though, not no, no. into it, you're not into it, right? Yeah, but there are not... I actually believe in his mind that he may have turned up at trade before and they've been okay with it because it's like, oh, we've been talking for two days and I just thought I couldn't... Yeah, but if, if you're deceiving people, yeah. right? If you're, if you're giving them an image of you from 20 years ago or whatever, <laughs> two years yeah. ago... I was happy that he was in his 50s. Um, Definitely, I, well, I thought he was. He even said he was in his 50s. But he was 80. But, you know, this is the whole thing of catfishing, right? As if you don't... <laughs> if you're not going to present yourself as you are, yeah. then you, you need to be prepared for that kind of um, decline. Decline, yeah. Decline, yeah. yeah. Access denied. It's a no from me. Yeah, it's a no from me. The chair didn't even turn. <laughs> it didn't. No, the chair didn't even turn. Uh, but it was interesting that he handled it that way, that he thought that coming over from Tauranga... Sorry, it, but what, 45 I don't know if he was anything, but was he, was he, was he fair-skinned? He, he was fair-skinned. He was fair-skinned. He was I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Because, because I, the last I have boyfriend... found in, in my life a lot of non maori men, older or men, um, have this thing where they think, I'm just going to be up for it. Yeah, right, the colonial... You know, they're, they're, well, I don't know if it's colonial, but I think it's just an entitlement of where they... Entitlement. That because I'm... I'm, I'm I'm of colour mm-hmm. and I'm trans, mm-hmm. that I'm just instantly there. Accessible. You know, I don't want to be... Yeah, available. I, I'm, I'm available. And yeah. I'm just like, no. No. 
No, no. no. I need to be attracted too to them. Yeah, and please go away from me before I break your balls. <laughs> Instantly. Very quickly too. Um, yeah, no, so least, that was my I dating. Mean, it could have been worse. He could have, he could have stolen your stuff. Well, he could have stolen your stuff. Oh, Oh, the trade that steals your things. This is in my height of my my um my my slutty dates when I was very young, very very young, and very egotistical about what I could and couldn't do. And I knew I was very confident that I could get people that I wanted. So I remember taking home two gentlemen, guys, and um. One was too impatient. Like, one had followed me into the bathroom while I was doing my hair. Oh, no. I was ready. Trying to get yourself ready. So we, we kind of got into things there. And then the second guy was a bit, bit Halloween and jealous. And then he, he took off my phone, my wallet. Your phone and, and your wallet. I was smoked at the time. And my contact lenses for and some stupid. Your... And my contact lenses. Oh. I was like, really? <laughs> Wow. But I didn't realise until after the day was the year. So, yeah, tragic, Lucky. terrible story. Yeah. Not the best story to go out on. No, but <laughs> I've had the same thing. I had flatmates, you know, when I had some, flatmates trade stole my things while I was asleep in my bedroom. Yeah, walked into my wardrobe and took two fabulous shirts that I'd bought. Oh, really? I kind of was rude, Nanu, yeah, but I just um, just had to get over it. I woke up in the morning, I was like, who did you have over here last night? Because my know? shirts are gone. Because you never exchange names. We'll have to ask Felicia that. Felicia? <laughs> It was a girl spell of tea. Yeah, yeah, it was 1989. We're talking a long time ago. Lived up on K Road. 1989, yeah. I was 10. Were you? 1989, I was 10. <coughs> I just choked. <laughs> I choked because I was 19. <laughs> I was 19. 10 years old. I was 9 going on 10, depending on the month. Um, I did love where we lived, though. We lived in a a, a warehouse behind K Road, and two icons from Alfie's lived downstairs. Yeah, they were um, Alfie's days. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think Alfie's. I, I. I've heard it things, but I don't think it was playing really well. No, it, it was really important. It was a really important time. And Nicole, we love Nicole. She started Nicole up Duval? a Nicole Duval, and she started oh, up a uh, Alfie's page of memories of that time. Oh, she yeah. shout out to you. Yeah. Oh, Cecile, love you. Yes, we love you, Nicole. So this show is for you. We're going to we're, we're going to uh, devote this song to you, Nicole. Ah, no, we're going to devote the show to you. Love you. And also to everyone else. Yes. Take care. Be safe. Look after each other. Look after yourselves. Um, Keep it clean. Keep it... Keep keep it clean. Yeah, keep it clean. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it takatapui. And remember, we love you. See you next time. Go home, buddy.